Welcome to a basic tour of your CenturyLink bill. In this video, we address the most common questions from our customers. Billing formats differ based on your specific area, which is why you will see two different formats. Let's get started. On all CenturyLink bills, you'll find one of the handiest pieces of information is in the upper right-hand corner of each page, your account number. Some customers' account numbers have 10 digits, as shown here. Others have an account number with 9 digits, as shown here. Look in the upper right-hand corner of your bill to find your account number. On the first page of the bill, you will find your account summary, which is the most commonly viewed area of the bill. Here, you'll find the answer to questions like, when is my bill due, and how much do I owe? The account summary also includes your previous balance and any recent payments CenturyLink has received. If you have a past due amount, you'll find that here. Next, you will find a section called Manage Your Account on the first page of your bill. This section has popular support tools and contact information for CenturyLink. Page 2 includes useful customer service information in a Keeping You Connected area at the top of the page, as well as common billing and payment options at the bottom of the page, like automatic payment and paperless billing sign-up. As we move past page 2 of the bill, there are some small differences in CenturyLink's two bill formats, which are based on where you live. On some bills, the next section you will see on page 3 is called Summary of Charges, which is exactly what it sounds like, a high-level summary of your charges. Not all customers will see this summary section of their bill, and that's okay. Why? Because this section is simply repeating information found in the Details section of your bill. The next section of your bill, which all customers have, is the Details section. This section just breaks your charges on the account summary section down into more detail. Depending on what CenturyLink services you have, this may be titled Details of your Internet Charges, Details of your Internet and Home Phone Charges, or Details of your CenturyLink Package Services. In this section, you'll see your monthly charges, which is probably the amount that looks most familiar to you. This is the monthly cost of your services. If you lease or rent a modem with us, you may find those monthly charges here too. Some customers will see their modem lease charges in this section, and others will find those modem lease charges in a later section of the bill that is called Additional Charges and Credits. Here is a details section example for a customer who only has internet service. These internet charges will be listed in a section called Details of your internet charges, Details of your CenturyLink broadband services, or details of your CenturyLink package services. In this next example, the customer has internet and home phone services. You'll see your monthly charges for those combined services here. In the details or additional charges and credits section of your bill, you may see one-time charges. What are one-time charges? These are charges that are only charged one time because they're for a single specific purchase or occurrence such as a modem purchase or a home visit by a CenturyLink technician. Prorated charges and or credits will display in this section, as well as any out-of-service credits you may be due. Charges such as these will not always be on your bill. Again, they only appear when special circumstances drive a specific one-time charge. Customers who lease a modem from CenturyLink will find those monthly charges in the Details section or Additional Charges and Credits section. If you have recently made changes to your CenturyLink services, you may see a bill section called Service Additions and Changes. Like in the previous example, only some customers based on their area will see a section labeled Service Additions and Changes. Like the Additional Charges and Credits section, Service Additions and Changes will only display when applicable to your account. This section will show you what services you removed, added, or changed and the order number for the changes that were made. It will also show you any amounts that were credited back to you or charged to you based on the changes you made. Some customers' bills may also have a section called Usage Charges. These charges are items like long-distance phone calls or calls to directory assistance. 
taxes, fees, and surcharges is the last section of your bill. For some accounts, like this example, the section may be a long, extensive list because our home phone products can often carry complex fees driven by local and state government agencies. Each of the taxes and fees are listed separately for each service in your area. This customer has internet service taxes and fees, local phone service taxes and fees, and long distance service taxes and fees. For more information about any of these fees, visit centurylink.com slash fees and taxes and search for the tax or fee by name. For some accounts, like this account where the customer only has internet service, you will notice that the taxes, fees, and surcharges section is rather simple. Again, if you have any questions about these fees or any other portion of your CenturyLink bill, visit us online at the CenturyLink Support Center or centurylink.com slash help. Thank you for being a CenturyLink customer and taking this tour of a CenturyLink bill with us.